Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Latin America show. My name is Enrique Gelista, and it's a pleasure being tonight with all of you because, well, we have prepared an extraordinary program for all of you. We're going to talk about Mexico. We're going to talk about Chiapas, that is in the southeast of Mexico, well, the south of Mexico. And we are going to talk with a writer that he is Ted Campbell, that, well, he has uh, actually written a book related to all this area that is a state in Mexico called it Chiapas. So we're going to discover some places that maybe you are interested to visit. And also we have an extraordinary uh, music producer. He is uh, from Colombia and UK, and he is Duku. So, well, he's going to be with us tonight. So, first of all, uh, I would like to ask you to share this video with, uh, with more people. It's very easy. You just only have to press here, share or compartir. Uh, it depends how do you have your uh, Facebook, your settings on Facebook. So, and remember to follow us in all of our social networks. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. If you go to YouTube, don't forget to put the bell there. And also on Facebook, put the bell there in order that you know every time that we are broadcasting or we are launching a new video. So you will know that, well, anyway, this program is always every Tuesday at eight o'clock London time, two o'clock Mexico time, and, and of course the rest of the world check your time zones. I would like to say hello. Well, we have some people already connected. So thank you very much for being with us tonight. I can see uh, Liliana that well, she's saying hello, hello. Uh, I, do I have, uh, uh, do I, I tengo comezón? I have, I'm scratching myself, have, have been, Scratch myself? Well, I don't know. But while well, Gary Dante is saying hello, uh, everyone from London. I don't know if I was doing that. Uh, hello, also, Svieta, that well, she's saying buenas noches a todos. Everybody's speaking in Spanish. And we haven't had the lesson with Whitney. So, well, remember to share this video, please, in order that more people they know what the Latinos, what the Latin American people we are doing around the world. And also, if you know anyone who wants to come to join us and to talk about maybe the best, their business or maybe something that they are doing like to be in arts or musicians or singers or people that they are like in travel, travel agencies that well, it looks like, well, we are almost at the end of the tunnel. So well, we can see the light at the end of the tunnel. So well, it looks like, well, it's gonna come soon the normality to this country at least, but just, uh, just to remind that well, just keep all these kind of measures in order that you, um, well, that you, don't have this terrible disease that, well, we have struggling with it for the, well, year and a half, almost, I think so. So, well, I would like to say hello to mis amigos. Hola a todos. Very excited to um, start with you guys tonight on our program. Lots to learn about Mexico, Colombia, and tribute to my favorite holiday today. It's a very important day. It is <sighs> National Wine Day. So grab your favorite bottle. This is Garzón uh, Tanat from Uruguay that we talked about in our January episode. Um, so go see that. And yes, which you can buy at Paladar as well. So I hope you are opening up a favorite bottle of wine in honor of tonight. I know I will a little bit later on. Why you're not sharing with us, with me? Um, because it's my favorite bottle and I want it for me, myself and I. No, I'm just kidding. Because we're broadcasting from different areas of London, remember? Okay, okay. <laughs> enjoy, enjoy your bottle of wine. On the other side in Clapham Junction. <laughs> Roger, hello, everyone. I, hello everyone. I don't have a wine so because Whitney She's got it. So anyway, <laughs> I just want to say hello to everyone. Uh, as a, just to emphasize what Enrique says, just be conscious. Slowly, slowly, we're going out. Don't go so crazy so we can uh, enjoy more time, more free time. So welcome. And let's do it today. Excellent, Roger. So, well, as I said, we have prepared a very nice show that, well, we're going to talk about nature. We are going to talk about extraordinary landscapes that you can visit in Mexico and also fantastic music uh, from this Colombian UK singer and music producer. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think it's time to go for the first section with Winnie in the chair. Yay, okay. Um, hello, everyone. Wait, welcome to Making Spanish Simple, part one. 
So since one of our guests is going to be talking about tourism in Mexico, here are some important words and phrases um, to get around during your next trip. So there are more questions because, you know, you ask a lot of questions, you're going to be hearing a lot of questions. Um, so just to review some of the question words, and then we're going to link them with some of the most common questions that you're going to hear. So let's begin. Oh, Enrique, what am I yeah. asking you to do? Oh, sorry, I haven't. <laughs> yeah. I thought I had him trained from before. Roger knows. He just. <laughs> what? Como un perro. Yes. No, I mean, nothing. Okay, mute it, please. <laughs> Hold on. Let me do something. Now. No, don't you. <laughs> <laughs> that is the power. This is why I hate not being able to host the Zoom. That's okay. We'll, we'll get back at you later. It's called revenge. All right. So moving on. <laughs> Roger, you're so funny. All right. I'm going to look at my slides and not at you guys because I'm not going to be able to get through the next few minutes. Okay. So again, question words. Going over a few and linking them together. So you have que, which means what. And then como, which means how. And sometimes it also means what as well. Um, particularly if someone says something that you don't understand, you could say que, como. Um, so there, you see them in various different ways. The first one is como te llama. So even though como normally means how in front of like the rest of a sentence and not alone, um, como te llamas literally means how do you call yourself? It's what we call reflexive verb. Um, but in English, we don't speak like that. So it's, what's your name? Como te llamas? Um, and then como estas, that we see translated a little bit more literally in how are you doing? So como te llamas? Como estas? Um, and then the last one, geez, I, I was thinking of a lot of different question words that we could have put with this, but like, ¿qué quieres hacer? Like, what would you like to do? Okay. Um, for example, like if you're going to be, if you go to, I don't know, like the, ho like the hotel concierge and you ask for suggestions, like, ¿qué quieres ver? ¿Qué quieres hacer? Um, you could use K in a lot of other different questions as well, of course, and that's just one example. So let's actually use this example and put this in the comments. ¿Qué parte de México quieres ir? So what part of Mexico would you like to go to? Um, put it in the comments. You would say quiero ir a, um, or quiero visitar, quiero viajar. It depends. You can use whichever verb. Um, so por ejemplo, si es Tulum, okay, it's yo quiero ir a Tulum. Okay, so put it, throw it in the comments below. I will check it out in about one or two minutes when they load. <laughs> um, and yeah, where in, where in Mexico do you want to go to? Think of a place, a city, a region, and throw it in. Okay, moving on. All right, so a couple more. We're not getting to all the question words, of course, but here are a few more. Donde, donde is where. So this is a really common word you hear, especially in Spanish 101. Um, one of the questions is de donde eres? Like, where are you from? Uh, and, and donde esta, okay, or donde estas, if you were to say donde estas, where are you? But if you were to say donde esta, um, this is what you would use if you're referring to well, lots of things, but for example, places. Like, donde esta la plaza? Donde esta el restaurante? Donde esta el baño? Or which is what I have here. Um, where is something located? Now, as you can see, de donde eres, and, and then donde esta, or como estas, as we learned in this question up here. Um, those are the verb estar. That's because in both of these situations, como estas and donde esta, uh, that's talking about location. And location, your location changes maybe not as much during a pandemic, but you change locations periodically or frequently in, in, in normal pre-COVID times. And that's why we use the verb estar. Um, so that's an example of that. And then last few, because I know time is of the essence, I wanna get to your comments, so please put them in. Cuando, so cuando means when, not at what time, that's a que hora. And we'll talk about that in, in a future segment. We already talked about that a little bit if you caught my segment a few weeks ago. So cuando is when, like day of the week, um, month, year, whatnot. So 
cuando quieres hacer ese tour? So if someone's like doing a tour, and there are many ways to say tour, like gira, tour, visita. Um, cuando quieres? It'd be like what day of the week? Like cuando quieres hacer esto? It could be miércoles, it could be la semana que viene. It, it just depends. So that's when we use cuando versus a que hora. A que hora refers specifically to time, which I will review in a future segment because we haven't done a lot of that yet at all. And then finally, cuanto. All right. So when you're pulling out your wallets, your Apple ID, what your, your Apple Pay, whatever it is, um, everything has a cost. So cuanto is a really good word. How much or cuanto cuesta? How much does this cost? All right. Or cuanto cuestan if it's more than one thing that you're buying. Okay. Um, and that is a really, really useful word because you know we're we're paying for a lot of things that we're doing on holidays. Very little in this world is free. So I am gonna go back to the comments, okay? And I'm putting this up here in case anyone wants to get a last minute comment in. So I am only seeing, and Enrique, in a minute, I'm gonna ask you to chime in because I think you see this a little bit, um, no. a little bit more in advance than I do. But I saw Gary and Dancy said, Quiero ir a Chiapas porque vi una foto bonita or bonita because it's una foto, but per, almost perfect Spanish. That could be interesting so, to say because it's a masculine. Photo. So, okay. It's so, <laughs> yes. Thank you. And I'm not saying that like, thank you, Enrique, please be quiet. No, that's actually a really good point. So, no, I'm giving you a, okay. <laughs> um, what I mean to say is that when we're talking about certain nouns, just like I explained on earlier shows, certain words that end in a, a aren't always feminine. And most of those words, not all of them, end in M-A. Like el problema, el tema, el um, lema, el poema. And also, it's the same thing with other words that end in A, like el planeta. It's just masculine and you, and you think that. So then you have words that end in O, and not just photo. I mean, photo at least has an explanation because it's short for fotografía, which ends in an A. However, there are other words in the Spanish language that end in O, such as la mano, hand. Why is it la? Exactly. So that's a very good point. Those are just those common outliers that you memorize and get on with it because I, there's really not an explanation in my, in, in my opinion as a language learner. Um, okay, there's another comment. Me gustaría visitar. Perfect, even better. Me gustaría. We haven't gotten to that yet, but that's definitely um, what I would say. Me gustaría visitar Barranca so cobre with copper cannon. Yeah, cobre is copper. Ooh, nicely done. Okay, top two students. Absolutely. Nicely done. I think in the future, we should have one of the quiz questions, Enrique, in uh, what does something mean in... Um, in Spanish from the lessons because so that, not that I'm criticizing your question writing, it's it's really great. It's so good that last time only one person got it right, but that's it for tonight. <laughs> that's it. That's my first part, <laughs> criticizing. <laughs> now I can see that well, you're the kind of teacher that well. It's like once you take <laughs> one of your students, it's like you are like mocking him all the time. And it's like, yeah, like, oh. yeah but why me? I'm you, know what, though? you know what though and I feel like you're secretly one of these people there are some students who hate that attention and there are some I was just talking about this today with a colleague of mine who love attention even if it's negative like I could be telling someone off in the hallway and be like what did you do blah 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 blah, blah. and they'd be like can you stay out here with me please like they just love attention like negative or positive and that's totally you Enrique I've decided I'm well, always paying attention and I I, I I a good student so I don't know why I you are like so it's student. like the, the thing is that well like maybe I'm a very good student so I maybe I have been in the I next said level you good. You made maybe, or down. maybe the teacher the problem is the teacher uh -huh. <laughs> that is it for segment one <laughs> Thanks for your Take favorite care. part, which involves Enrique speaking very little next time, and that'll be, <laughs> I'm just kidding, segment two. Actually, he'll have a lot to say because it's Mexican slang, so stay tuned, and we'll be, yeah. He'll criticize all of it, say it's all wrong, and then say a different word, but that's okay. I'll invite Take him care. to, this is his language more than mine. I don't know a lot, it's Mexican slang. Yes, this, Roger. This, this guy is asking. Yes, my best student, Take thank care. you. What? <laughs> if I was you... Just leaving double homework to this guy. Oh. <laughs> <Just because. laughs>
Totally. Always. You are the kind of students that always like, hey, he didn't do the homework. <laughs> oh, you were this. Oh. <laughs> Yes. And we get the one in the front being like this, like this. Yeah, 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 like yeah, me, yeah. me, 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 Anyway. Actually, I think so, Whitney, can you go to the last slide that you have regarding to the important word that you said at the end that, well, is cuánto cuesta? Mm -hmm. I cuanto think cuesta? so. The, 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 what happened? Bye. Bye, 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 yep. bye, bye, <laughs> so bye, 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 bye. You just wanted to change it. And, <laughs> and now it's like, where are I you now? Okay. Where are you now? I need to refresh Facebook. I don't know where, yeah. you, where are you now. Okay, yeah, that one. I think so you said that is the mo most important one. However, yeah. I will add another one more important. Of course, because I can't one. be right. What? No. <laughs> Any discount? Ah, this <laughs> one Any say. discount? Because it's this after you're goes. asking how much it costs. It's something that, well, bargaining is common in some places in Mexico. Bargaining. So yeah. it's allowed. So it's like, it's like, okay, well, you have to ask. Any discount? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. okay. Thinking, it's not important. I'm okay. quiet because what I'm about to say, yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, this one. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Wow, but okay. how do you say a discount or to bargain? Because I think they're both very good words. Mm. Which one would you like? Discount, descuento, or rebajar is like. Un descuentito. Un descuentito. No? Un descuentito. Un descuentito. Un descuentito. Un descuentito. Lo menos, or if you're talking about Mexico, it could be. And lo menos. At least like, yeah, it's like, I'm telling mm -hmm. you. What's in, uh, or if you really want a good discount, that's when I ganga, sabes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But okay. in, yeah. Anyway, so but it was like, just, I was just saying that, well, it's like always it's good to ask for a discount. Yeah. Or in Colombia, it's ico. That's how they, they do their itos. A lot of the times you'll see ico, ica instead of ito, ita. Yeah, descuentico. Gracias. Descuentico. Oh, we agree on something. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm done with my segment. Move. Turn, moving on. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much, Whitney. Mm -hmm. And thank you, everyone who is connected. Well, I can see that well, it's like also our friend Joshua is connected. Garen, uh, Abhijit, that actually Abhijit, you can see that well, Liliana was the first one to put a post here yeah. in the comment section. So, well, you're, what, what, what's going on with you? And while well, you're commenting that well, it's like, no rain in London today. However, Annalise, that well, she's saying hello. Uh, she's saying that, well, we, uh, we had a few spots this evening. Oh, well, well, anyway, it's like, it's a very weird spring that we have here. Um, and actually also Gary and Danzi, she's saying, eh, pero hay tantos lugares hermosos en México. Yeah. Yes, there are a lot of places. So, well, you have like your, your, your uh, you have some students that we have like all the time following you with me. I so know, very learning. good students. Yeah. yeah, so you have to I'm give them like a, 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 a spiritual price. bottle of wine. <laughs> okay, cool. So, well, anyway, following up, we were talking and well, actually at the end, don't forget because well, the Mexican Chamber of Commerce, they are like inviting us to, well, inviting all of you also to a tequila tasting that is going to be, and we are going to talk about that one later. So don't worry, Roger, you don't have to put it now. I can't see your face, so don't worry. It's like, yeah, <laughs> but it's just that people, they know because well, uh, there's an event that is coming uh, the 27th, if I'm right, uh, that well, you will have, ah, Thank you very much, Roger, that was good. So, well, we're gonna have this tequila tasting that well, the Mexican Chamber of Commerce, our friends, they are inviting you. So we're gonna give you all the details so you can find this uh, tasting a network session uh, organized by different Chamber of Commerce of Latin America. So well, it's like, uh, if you want, you can register there. So don't miss this opportunity with Proximo, the Mexican Chamber of Commerce and 1800 tequila. So uh, I think it's a good opportunity if you want to try and you want to taste a little bit of tequila. And um, talking about tequila, talking about Mexico, we had uh, the opportunity, and I think so you're going to introduce our guest, Whitney. I am, definitely. All right, so our first guest is Ted Campbell. So Ted Campbell is a writer, copy editor, translator, and university professor. And he moved to China early of 2020, 
um, after living in Mexico for 10 years. And by the way, this is why we have the interview pre-recorded because it would be, I think like 3 a.m. his time right now. So we didn't want to do that to this poor guy. So anyways, he's a U.S. and Canadian citizen who has visited more than 40 countries. As Enrique stated earlier, he's um, written two guidebooks about Mexico and he's had stories published by various um, publishing companies and a couple newspapers. And he posts travel stories and practical tips for Mexico on his popular blog, Noi Bronca, which by the way, is one of the top 100 blogs listed in Latin America, which is how we found him. So everyone, please enjoy this interview that we gave with Ted Campbell. Okay, so well, Ted, thank you very much for being tonight with us. So well, it's like, first of all, and, and I would like to ask you that this is interesting, is like, why did you decide to go to live in Mexico? And, 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 and of course, where in Mexico have you lived? Okay, well, um, do you have foreign friends living in Mexico? Because well, most of them are there, same <laughs> reason. Do you? Okay, yeah, but, but yeah, but tell me, tell me your reasons. Yes, yes, we would like to know because mainly the audience, they would like to know. Most, yeah. I want, I want you to guess. I want you to guess. Why do foreigners move to Mexico? Young, not retired people, but why do most foreigners move to Mexico? Well, I think so. Yeah, there are like many reasons and I'm going to give you like different options, maybe or alternatives that it could be from one okay. letter A, the weather, letter B, it could be the history, culture, the environment. Yeah. Let us see. It could be learning Spanish. Yeah. Let D could be the food and, uh, and, and of course the drinks. So, and letter E could be any other, all, all the above, all the above, all the above. All the above. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was letter, uh, what's next F and, um, a lot of the foreigners I know in Mexico, uh, F do you have it? Uh, yeah. I, I'm pretty sure which one is, and actually it starts with an F, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's like, I a didn't mean that. like a female. Female, exactly. Yes. My oh, wife. you were thinking yeah. in a bad way when no, I No, no, that was you. Oh, that was you. No, I was uh, I was thinking <laughs> I was thinking about F that is a female. Yeah. That was you. Oh, that was you. <laughs> never, I never thought that. Female, female. Uh, my my then girlfriend and my now wife, we okay. met we met in Vancouver, Canada. Okay. And, uh, spent a year together, and and I was looking for a change in my life. I was already a teacher. I knew I could find work in Mexico, and I moved to Mexico to be with her. And what eleven years later, we got married about six years after that. And 11 years later, we're still together and living in China. And A, B, C, D, E, absolutely. Weather, food, drinks, history and culture, those were just bonuses. I, was, I had visited Mexico several times before that. And I knew I liked Mexico a lot, but I moved there to be with my wife. And I asked you because many of the foreigners I know, at least where I live, which I lived in Toluca, Mexico. And there's, it's not a place where people go to retire. It's not very well known. And all the foreigners I knew that went there because their husband or their wife was Mexican. And, and basically something that is interesting that you're saying, because well, in Toluca, uh, there are a lot of companies that they are from different parts of the world. They are like companies that they are in the automotive industry yes. or they have like chemical industries, etc. So it's very near and just that people they know, it's very, it's like one hour driving from Mexico City and actually it's like Mexico City is growing up. So actually it's like any time, well, sorry, every time is closer to Mexico City. So a lot of people, yes. they live in Toluca and they work in Mexico City, etc. But it's like, that is one of the reasons that they are like a lot of foreigners coming to Toluca mm -hmm. because sometimes it's just part of the work and they need some Mexicans and they got married. And actually I think it's like, uh, well, my sister actually, it was something similar that happened, mm. but she moved to US instead of like he coming, uh. he going to Mexico City. But yeah, it, it, it's interesting that you're saying. And uh, so I can guess that also your wife is from Toluca or no? What she is, is she from? from? Toluca. Yeah, she's from a small there. town called Temoya. Do you know, are you familiar with the area? Which, which, which place? 
Oh, she's a small town next to Toluca called Temoya. And Temoya mm. is a, a, a center of the Otomi culture. You've heard ah, of the Otomi okay. people, the Otomi language. Yeah. So there's, it's a, she is not an Otomi person, but it's a center of Otomi culture. And it's called Temoya. So okay. And have Temoya you live, listening to this. And have you lived only in Toluca or any other parts in Mexico? Only Toluca. I moved to Toluca and I stayed there my entire time in Mexico. Yes. That, that's pretty impressive because normally, I mean, you moved for her, obviously, so that changes things. But I would, I would assume a lot of people move to like Mexico City if they're just wanting mm. to start over. Um, uh, so let's talk about the region that we're kind of, we broadcasted about um, in our promo and that's Chiapas. Yes. So you've written several articles. So I've gone through your blog, <laughs> combed through many, many pages and saw very um, quite a few articles about this particular part in Mexico. So what parts in Chiapas have you been to and what were they like? Um, yes, uh, it's definitely one of my favorite parts of Mexico and one of the first places I visited on a very long trip. I spent t uh, at least what, three or four weeks there the first time I went. And I going back out every year I lived in Mexico. So I've been there over 10 times, sometimes multiple times. So I've been nearly everywhere. I mean, it's a large state. I've been to all the major tourist destinations of Chiapas. Um, I've been to some out of the way beaches, some small towns people don't normally go to, um, some ruins that are a little off the beaten track. And I have crossed from Chiapas into Guatemala Three, yeah. three or four times yeah so uh, I, I saw those grade. articles yeah as well yeah <laughs> I wrote those articles a long time ago probably when I first started the blog and went to Chiapas so I'm not I don't exactly remember what exactly I wrote about but to answer your question I know a lot about the state and one of my favorite okay. in Mexico. absolutely and and just like well if we are talking about Chiapas it's like why hmm. or why yeah it's like why people they can um, expect to see in chiapas what are the tourist attractions and and i know that well we have a map because also i think so, as we said before you have um, you have written some guidance and everything and, and and the people they can be given providing some advice but it's like which kind of places uh, people they can visit there uh, the two primary tourist destinations, uh, you can see the, 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 their names at the top of the map are San Cristobal de las Casas, which is um, the old colonial capital of the, of the state, of the region, actually. A beautiful old um, Spanish colonial cobblestone street town up in the mountains, in a valley of the mountains, surrounded by pine forests. And then Palenque is one of the most magnificent ancient Mayan cities um, in uh, Mexico, certainly in Mexico, but in all of Central America. Uh, um, the only thing I've seen that comes close is Tikal in Guatemala. Um, Palenque is, has incredible architecture. Um, it's in the jungle where monkeys live. And um, yeah, those are the two primary destinations of Chiapas. Everyone who goes to Chiap Chiapas should. San Cristobal is a very good home base to visit the other places on the map such as Montebello Lakes and uh, the Canyon de Sumidero, which is between San Cristobal and Tuxta Gutierrez. And then using San Cristobal as a day, as a, as, a, as a base to visit other places and then take the trip to Palenque and visit Palenque. And there's a lot to see around Palenque too, besides the ruins. So okay. in that way, we can say that, well, um, so in that way, we can say that, well, visiting Chiapas is a good alternative for uh, all the people, you know, that, that well, they can travel and they, it's more about sightseeing and have this kind of, um, to be close to the nature, because you were saying it's a jungle. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, it is a good alternative for someone. There's a different kind of traveler who goes to, to Chiapas. It's not all, all inclusive resorts. Uh, there are beaches, but they're extremely undeveloped, less developed than Oaxaca. And, uh, I, I mean, I love, the, the Mayan Riviera, Playa del Carmen, uh, but it's quite developed, right? Um, San Cristo, uh, Chiapas has, as you said, nature, lots of nature, not just jungle, there's mountains and there's the coast, there's rivers, um, but yes, a lot of jungle. And it's, it's easy to travel there, but it also feels quite kind of adventurous and remote. It's, it's, it's quite safe. 
and you have everything that's wonderful about Mexico. So you have your and people from Mexico. Um, and then you have the local Mayan culture, the different uh, Mayan tribes who still live in Chiapas. Most people in Chiapas, I, I'm sorry if I'm wrong, but I, as, I, as I remember, I believe that the majority of Chiapas residents do not speak Spanish as a first language. Um, yeah. That could be wrong, sorry. No, 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 <laughs> but, no, 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 no. There are, um, correct? Yeah. I, I looked this up too. Um, there are at least okay. around 56 indigenous groups. It's like one of the greatest concentrated like indigenous region of Mexico mm. as far as diversity and variety. So absolutely. And I think that's worth mentioning yeah. too. So I'm glad you mentioned that because I was going to ask you about that. Um, you touched a little bit upon like the trip and the route. So um, mm. could you just talk about like, where did you start going from point A to point B? You talked a little bit about it, but also how much time did, did you spend in each area so that our guests who are dying to go to Chiapas um, have a good idea of what to do and how to plan the trip there? Well, I spent a lot of time there. I think <laughs> I was in, just in San Cristobal for two weeks, just in San yeah. Cristobal. Uh, the, fir the first time I went, and I have visited other times where I only went to San Cristobal and maybe took a few day trips. Um, uh, a, a week is enough to see both San Cristobal, Las Casas, and Palenque. Uh, okay. More is just even better, right? But with, say, a week, you would want three or four days in San Cristobal and you take a day trip to the Canyon de Sumidero. Um, there is a small town called uh, San Juan Chamula that has a very interesting native group living there, um, um, which is a 20 minute something trip from San, uh, San Cristobal Las Casas. This is the Canyon de Sumidero, that's the Grijalva River. And that's a, day, a full day. You take a, a boat trip up the river. As you can see there, the highest point of the canyon is uh, a thousand meters, one kilometer. Um, from the top to the bottom. When you're in a boat looking up at it, it's quite amazing. Um, that trip is something like four hours up the river and back in a boat. Wow. I did it a long time ago, but the guide was super cool and let me bring a six pack of beer on board. <laughs> but then you have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> but then you have to go to the bathroom on the way back. I don't know if they're still that cool. You know, but yeah, exactly like that. You take a boat trip up the river. And you stay in San Cristobal de las Casas for that trip. Every travel agency in town arranged a trip, but it's very up on your own on public transportation to the small town. Full small town at, on the river outside of the canyon, Chiapas de Orzo. Okay. Walk up I, to the boat, guys. I, um, I was there a very long time. I did this trip once. Yes. And, and in that way, it's like Ted, it's like, uh, well, uh, you have been in, in, in US. I don't know if you have been actually in the Grand Canyon in the US. No, I have not. I, I drove by it a few times, but I never actually went there. But I, well, I but think so. That, well, for, for people, it's, it's very interesting that, well, they know that, well, there's a lot of, uh, as well, as we can see in the pictures, there's a lot of, um, trees and everything, but also it's like so narrow in some places that well, you feel mm -hmm. like how high are these, uh, this kind of experience being there. So I think it's like, and this is very near to Tuxtla Gutierrez, right? Actually it's in Tuxtla Gutierrez. Yeah. It is, it's right outside Tuxtla Gutierrez. Anyone um, on, short on time basically can skip Tuxtla Gutierrez. It's a, it's a, it's a kind of, it's, it's, I spent a bit of time there actually. Um, but it, uh, unless you're really interested in kind of modern day Mexico, um, not especially over well-developed, but um, regular Mexico with a big public market, there's uh, anyone short on time should not um, go to Tuxtla Gutierrez. It, it, not to say it's bad, but... Um, yeah, there's, there's nothing the outstanding there. There's nothing outstanding yeah. or something that we can say that a part of the canyon is like a, there is no nothing else to see there. Yeah. But but actually, just that the audience they know well is the capital of the state. So it's like basically if you are taking a it's flight or if you are arriving there, so it's like the main city. But well, it's like something that well, if you are going there or you are going to make a stop because you are taking a fly a flight to that part. So it's like. Well, take some time to go to the canyon because actually it's just uh, mm -hmm. amazing. And actually, you were mentioning other places yep. like, uh, for example, moving forward, and you were talking about the lakes. 
or uh, and, and, yes. and we have a previous this call well we have a debate about what is a lake what is a lagoon etc that well in lagoon, spanish yeah. we have different <laughs> meanings but well it's like in spanish we call it like lagunas de montebello that well is like how many of them they are do you have an idea how many of them it's 50 something i think it's 57 or 58 there's a lot of them and they're all different colors the, the one in the picture as you can see is greenish there's bluish ones um it's gorgeous gorgeous setting there's a blue one um and you uh there's 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 a that looks like it's a zip line or something across it um there's uh little trails between them you can take a boat trip on them i found a trail that led to a little waterfall um between two lakes it's a really beautiful area uh, this is a long day trip from san cristobal y las casas uh, I believe I did it from the, the Comitan, which is in the center of the, of the, of the state. Comitan is a, basically a colonial city, exactly like San Cristobal y las Casas, except no foreign tourism to speak of. Um, so that's a good base for visiting there. Or you can take the trip all the way from San Cris, get up really early and make it to the La, La, Lagunas de Montebello, Bello. Lagunas de Montebello, right? Montebello, and, and I, thank you. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> no, no. And actually, it's like these ones, is there's like a, and I think it was the first image that well, we were seeing, it's like they had a border with Guatemala, as you were saying. Mm -hmm. And this one, this yes. line that we can see in the middle, actually, is the border between Mexico and Guatemala. Oh, yes. Most of them, most of them, they are in Mexico, but well, this, this, this lake is shared between Mexico and Guatemala, and actually, I think so in that stone that you can see at the at, at the bottom yeah. of the image is saying there this is the end of Mexico this is the beginning and this is the and welcome to Guatemala so this is a border that we have between the between the lakes but yes it's like I think so it's a, it's a, it's a as you said it's a long trip and actually it's like you have to drive yeah there is no way to go there but also I I don't know if well I had the experience to be there and it's just uh, amazing and I think so the experience driving even the roads, they are like a, a lot of, of tours all around. But I think so driving across the jungle and listening the sounds is just like a good experience that well is strongly recommend to, to the audience, right? Absolutely. And, and I have to say that you can get there um, without driving in uh, colectivos. You have to take oh, yeah. at least two. Yeah, yeah, you have to. You need probably need a little bit of Spanish skills and a lot of patience. That's how I got there. I took colectivos. <laughs> I took colectivos there. And, and do you so speak it is Spanish, possible. Dad? I do. At the time, okay. I was learning Spanish. At the time, that was I went there on my first trip to Chiapas. So that was something like 10 years ago. And I spoke decent Spanish then. But now I'm fluent. And I, I, I'm a, I was a translator for many years in Mexico. Yeah. Yes. Okay. yes. My, my pronunciation is awful. <laughs> but but I... I I am fluent Spanish speaker, yes. So, we're talking in Spanish. Sí, quiero hablar en español. Sin problema. Pregúntame. No, ya no, ya no, no, no hablo español ni nada. Entonces. No, that's perfect. And, and, and actually, well, as we were talking about different uh, places and everything, it's like we, you were talking about Palenque, and I think so that well, when you Palenque. were saying Palenque, there is also like a natural place that actually is like, it's very near to Palenque mm -hmm. and you recommend to visit, right? Um, yes, I think you're talking about the waterfalls, right? There's several waterfalls. Mm -hmm. That's Agua Azul. Azul. And as you can see, it's not actually blue. Uh, when I went there, it looked like that. It was, it was brown. Um, but at certain times of the year when there's less rain, it has this stunning glowing blue color. But if you go during the summer when it's raining, it'll look like that. There you go. That's what it's supposed to look like. Um, Agua Azul. In, in which season did you go? I went in August because that was my on the university. Um, uh, okay. You know, and I was a university professor there. Ah, okay. So it was in a break that you had the opportunity to go there. Yes, exactly. Yes, uh, that's. The nice thing about teaching university is you get long vacations to take long, long trips. And so instead of going to Chiapas for one week and rushing around seeing everything, I really slowed down. I was able to go back so many times over the years. That's Agua Azul. There's another one called Muyil, which is where um, it's a very tall waterfall going into a pool. 
And that's where Predator, there's a, there's a scene from Predator, the movie Predator, if yeah. you remember Predator. Whitney, did you ever see Predator? I haven't, but I will oh. after this interview. Watch Predator. <laughs> One of Arnold's greatest moments, no question. And it was filmed in the area. It was filmed in Chiapas yeah. in Guatemala. And w- there's a scene where I think he jumps off the cliff into the waterfall, which is there. There's another one too. There's about three, there's lots of waterfalls near Palenque, but there's three major ones that yeah. you can go to. And this one is Aguasul. And you walk along this for at least an hour, seeing these rapids and waterfalls. Very, very beautiful place. Wonderful. And in, in that way, it's like I would like just to, to encourage today. Actually, it's like, well, as, as Ted, he was saying, it's a jungle and sometimes it could be mm-hmm. like really, really warm weather. So it could be very hot oh, yeah. and very humid. Oh, yeah. And also, if you are going, yes. I think in the particular season that, well, Ted was that it was summer. So, of course, I think so you were sweating a lot. It was like really humid yeah. and everything. Yeah. So one of the advices that maybe we can do uh, to the audience is like, if you have the opportunity to go there, I think so an extraordinary time, it could be during the winter. And actually these pictures, they, they have been taken during the winter because it's like a little mm. bit cooler. Uh, mm. So even it's still very humid and very hot, it's like a good time because well, as Ted, he was saying, if you are going to walk one hour, well, you prefer not to walk when it's like really hot and the sun is so, so so strong and everything so it's like um yeah and, and actually you can see it as you were saying because it's not a rainy season or something you can see the color of the turkish water and everything but well it's like um yeah it's, it's, it's really beautiful mm-hmm. yeah and yes absolutely what would be yeah i know enrique you mentioned that you went in august and enrique mentioned like winter um what about like tourist season like if you wanted to avoid like high tide tourists who like come in and check these areas out when would you recommend that for for this and for the rest of chiapas if if that's kind of the goal avoiding tourists abs all of mexico don't go there in semana santa got it right which is yeah yeah and you know what that is uh yeah Yeah. holy week right before the week before easter i never travel i traveled once during semana santa and every other year i just stayed home too many people um (laughs) between christmas and new year's eve gets very busy in mexico but i i spent not actually christmas but the days leading up to it in san cristobal de las casas one year and it wasn't so busy right if you go to cancun or playa del carmen or even oaxaca then it'll be a really really crowded but my one experience i i right before christmas i was there one year and it wasn't so bu- it wasn't so busy it wasn't so bad um, but that's a busy time. And then another busy time is a lot of Mexicans have a vacation in late July and early August. And it gets, and, 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 um, San, and Chiapas is a very popular destination with university students in Mexico. They go down there in groups um, to visit these places. So it will be a little busier then. But Chiapas in general doesn't get as busy as other parts of Mexico. So aside from Semana Santa, I, I would tell someone, just go for it. Yeah, it's... Okay. Yeah. And, and now I have a different question moving on to like the different parts. And, and this is what Enrique mentioned at the beginning, like the A, B, C, D, E, all the above. Let's talk a little bit about food and beverage. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's so, and I've, and I've noticed that on your blog, you've talked about food, I'm sure. I didn't see a lot. I saw like the craft beers and whatnot. So, can you talk a little bit about food and beverage and some of the dishes that one has to try when they're in this region? Okay, uh, well, th- that's something uh, someone <laughs> listening to this is going to think, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. But honestly, uh, Chiapas does not have the in, like the div- this very distinctive food that a place like Oaxaca would have, right? Like uh, everywhere you go in Mexico, you can find a Oaxacan restaurant or even you- the Yucatan has distinctive food. Um, food from specific food from Chiapas, there's not that much of it. One dish that is local is called um I, I had to write it down because it's been so long since i ate it uh asado coleto uh, coletos are people from um from san cristobal de las casas and asado means like uh, a grill right or a cooking cooking meat yeah. and so it's pork with a thick uh brown sauce made of chile ancho and garlic it's a lot like mole but it's it's not mole um that is a a, a local dish mm-hmm. uh, other than that there's a lot of tamales in uh in 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 chiapas the local people cook some good tamales um 
And then other food you get in Mexico, uh, mole. I, I think that's the third best mole in Mexico. You have Puebla and you have Oaxaca, obviously one and two. I would put Chiapas mole, mole negro, number three. Um, cacao. So that's meals, right? But I love going to the market, especially San Cristobal Las Casas, and you can find uh, cacao. They call them beans, but they're actually seeds. Chocolate, um, cacao, they're actually a, a, a seed. And you can peel them and eat them, eat them raw. They're not sweet, of course, but I find them quite good. And then they use that for obviously the mole, but then for some drinks and things like that, like get a good hot chocolate in, um, in Chiapas. Um, so yeah, in, on the, oh, and before I go to drinks, fruit. Um, I really love fruit. I make it a mission to try fruit I've never tried before. I'm having a great time here in China finding weird things. And uh, Chiapas has fruit that you will not find elsewhere in Mexico easily. Um, for example, um, pitaya, which is in English, it's called dragon fruit. Uh, you can find it sometimes in parts of Mexico, but you can find a lot of it in Chiapas at certain times of the year. Um, another one is called uh, rambutans, which is from Asia. Any, uh, if you've been to, anyone who's been to Thailand has seen them. They're kind of hairy. Uh, they're like lychees, but with long kind of hairs on them. You can find rambutans in season and on the streets of Chiapas all the time. Um, other things like that. So it's a great, I've seen the largest guayabas I've ever seen in my life. A guayaba in English is uh, guava. Guava. Mm -hmm. Guava, right? They're about this big, right? I've seen them this big in, in Chiapas. Huge guayabas, beautiful, delicious guayabas. So fruit is a good one. And what about the smell of them? Oh, my wife hates it. Like, I can't oh, buy really? it. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. Really? I yeah. love it. It smells yeah, like I love it, really, too. Yeah. Yes, it's like... Yeah, I love it, too. I, it's, it's, you yeah. know what? This kind of uh, <laughs> smell that you... When you're entering to a house or something, it's like... This is guava smell. Yeah, it's like uh, you I recognize it immediately. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love it. I, I just bought a bunch a week ago here in, in uh, China, and I, I put them in the fridge, and now the butter smells like guava. <laughs> oh. <my wife. laughs> yeah, they infused the butter with it. Oh anyway, God. I love them. I yeah. love them, too. <laughs> and, and actually, let me I tell you about so drinks. Oh, yeah. Yes, oh, that's, Sorry, that's what I was going to just follow up on because this is Drinks, very okay. important. <laughs> well, uh, the, the, the tourist brochures for Chiapas, many tourist brochures for Chiapas called La Tierra uh, del Café, Chocolate y Café, right? Chocolate. There's a lot of coffee plantations in Chiapas and you can buy whole bean coffee in San Cristobal and go to many coffee shops. Um, really good coffee there. Every Every time I go to Chiapas, actually the, the nice fancy coffee house with beautiful home coffee, I usually just go to the market and find the local, um, the local Mayan ladies with big ground bags. And I come home, I used to come back with kilos of coffee every time. So definitely coffee. Um, the, 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 the native people makes a drink called pozole, which looks exactly like pozole without the E, uh, P-O-Z-O-L. And it's a ground corn um, in hot water, maybe cold water, and they mix chocolate with it. Supposedly, it's an energy drink. You get a huge styrofoam cup of it. It's a meal, basically. It'll fill you up. Pozole. Um, and then tasca latte. <laughs> I've had that at restaurants, actually. And it's like pozole, but the corn is ground very, very fine. And it's this kind of orange powdery drink. It's really delicious, really different. And of course, alcohol. Um, posh, P-O-X, pronounced posh, sometimes spelled P-O-S-H, is basically moonshine, um, corn whiskey. It's basically corn in, in you, Tennessee or Kentucky in the mountains, and you get a, same as cheapest, you get Coca-Cola bottle <laughs> filled with posh, costs about, God, 10 pesos maybe or less? I don't know how much alcohol is it, but it's more than a hundred proof and uh, it'll, yeah, it'll light a fire under you. And just <laughs> like pulque, <laughs> Enrique, did you ever have posh? No, yeah. actually no. no? I think really? so as, as the way that you spell it, I think it's like a Mayan word, maybe. Yes. Yeah, yes. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah as you were saying, yeah. yes, it's like a, uh, yeah, that's interesting. I know I haven't tried that. Yeah. I have to put it in my list. Yes, of course. Yeah, put it on your list. It's, you could find posherias. 
But if you go to a fancy uh, hipster pasharia, you'll spend money on your posh. Just like now, uh, mezcal is quite fancy now, and there's expensive mezcals. The yeah. best mezcal in Oaxaca costs, you buy it on the side of the road, right? And same with posh. So uh, that San Juan Chamula community, they have pasharias, like real pasharias, like the, the you go to the guy's house and... They also have curados, right? Just like pulque, you have the Jamaica posh and you have, they probably have a, a guayaba posh, uh, fruit poshes, which are delicious, frankly. But I always buy a plain one too. That's one of my stops. I buy my coffee and I buy my posh. And so anyone who likes drinking should definitely get a posh. Out of the bar, right? Like go to the, go to some guys, some go to some old man's house. He'll give you samples and then... <laughs> and and, and that, is, that is the main thing. And I think there's something that I would like to highlight that, well, it's like, there are two things that they are important to highlight here. First, you said like the part about going to the markets. It's like going to yes. the markets is a complete experience because actually in yes. the markets in Mexico, for example, if you see a fruit that you can try in your life, maybe the person who is selling the fruit is going to give you a piece to try. Mm -hmm. So they are going to be very very uh, honestly very nice like saying oh, you haven't tried this ah, and they caught one and they give you a taste and of course you can buy only one or you can buy one kilo some of the things that i recommend and and also i have had some people that well they when they visit mexico is just taking them there and and of course trying smelling the different fruits because they smell really nice even for example the guava well your wife she hates it, but it's like it. for the rest of them. Well, maybe we like it and you can try some of them. They are interesting. You can try them. I think it's the best experience and something important that just to know there is like a lot of people, they get ill in Mexico. Mm. They have bad stomach. Okay. That is going to happen. And it's not because it's not healthy or it is not because uh, it's not washed properly. It's because your organism is not uh, used to eat that kind of food. That could be spicy, that it could be, as you were talking about, pulque or the, the, the quantities of alcohol that maybe they are so high and it's not like this kind of process. It's more like yes. homemade. So mm -hmm. of course that could happen. Yes, that could happen. But it's like, actually, as a Mexican, me, sometimes when I'm going to Mexico, that happened to me too. Really? Because it's like something a little bit more greasy. So. Also, I carry all my time, my uh, omeoprazole or something, just to avoid any issues that, well, later on I have a terrible uh, gastritis or something. So it's like something that they have to consider. It's not because it's not proper wash. It's not about the water. It's not about the process. It's about our organisms and, well, our bodies. They, they are not uh, used to eat that kind of food. But, well, you can see that it's alive and, and he's eating in Mexico, in China, in the U.S., yeah. everywhere. Yeah, it's and, everywhere. Yeah, yeah, you have to... Like even the water, even if it's drinkable, like sometimes you just can't do that because you're afraid of how you'll react to it. But yeah, absolutely, totally. Exactly. I'd like I, I'd actually like to say something about that. I, I first of all, I do completely agree with you. Uh, I think spicy food affects people sometimes, but honestly, like I almost never got sick in Mexico. Like okay. ten years in Mexico, I may have gotten sick three times. Honestly, and I'm, I, I have a pretty tough stomach, but I honestly, honestly believe that, and we're more aware of this now with the epidemic, but I, I don't know how many foreigners I've met who complained about that they were sick. And then I watched them go to the bathroom and come out and they don't wash their hands. Or I watched oh. the same, I, or yeah, but, or maybe something less, less obvious, but like taking public I'm, I'm, I meet a foreigner. We decide to take a trip together. We take the bus. We go. We go to the restaurant. The food comes, and they grab it. Right? Yeah. You're on a bus. You're 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 touching all kinds of things. You you got to wash your hands. And I I strongly believe that. Yeah, I, I do not believe Mexico is a place where you automatically get sick. I don't believe, and I know you're not saying that, but people do think that. Moctezuma's yeah. revenge and these things. No, I yeah. Don't. <laughs> Tell us I mean, a little bit about that, that revenge. What is that? Never because, well, we know, we know Moctezuma yeah. revenge and we know maybe as Mexicans, but the audience know, what is the Moctezuma revenge? Oh, it's diarrhea. That's what people say oh, no. ab <laughs> about, yeah. I mean, that's what, that's food poisoning. That's what people say. It's revenge on the, on this, I guess, I suppose the Spanish, but it's, that would be the, Moctezuma would be getting revenge on the Spanish, but I know, like I said, never eat, for example, in a metro station, 
Mexican, like obviously, oh. but like, yeah, like no, some places you don't eat, but like I eat, I, there's a very good San Cristobal de las Casas. There's a little taco cart on the corner, right by all the bars. Leave the bar at three, four a.m. and get a plate of tacos. I've, <laughs> I've never gotten, I've never gotten sick doing that. But I well, I think that you have a lot of. I, I think that you you purify <laughs> your your you own your body yeah. before. Yeah, I think. maybe. When you build <laughs> maybe, community, maybe. when you when you're in a place for so long, like your body just gets used to it. But for travelers maybe. and tourists, they're coming and going, so there's less of that forgiveness and that time to build but i agree i agree but my point is tourists have to be like a lot more like totally. washing their after you take public transportation never touch food without washing your hands right oh. like just um just don't drink your beer from the from the bottle right there's a they get recycled there's a very distinct build up under the rim of the, the beer bottle so pour your in mexico they give you a glass right pour it into the glass uh drink your coca-cola from the glass straight from the bottle in mexico they give you a straw well not, not so much anymore because it's there's yeah. campaigns against using straws right which i agree with but pour it into the glass right mm. uh, there's very simple things travelers can do without being paranoid i hate it when they say is this uh, in english is this ice made from purified water it's like of course it is like they're they, they <laughs> Mexicans have just as high standards for cleanliness in their restaurants. Not in the Mexicans, but at restaurants, of course, things are clean. Like, well, I'm, but, but that, that's that's very good. Yeah, that you're, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but with the pandemic, I, I also think that people are going to treat traveling and hygiene very, very differently as well. You know, like, I haven't been sick since I, I I've, every year of my life I've had two or three bad colds. Ever since the pandemic, everyone wearing a mask everywhere. I haven't, I haven't like the had a cold yet. Yeah. Or like before hand you get into the tube, yeah. after you get out of the, the, or the metro, as you call it, the subway. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, wearing, I, wearing the mask. Yeah. I think that myth is going to go away as well, because I think people now with the pandemic and after are going to be more careful. But that's a good point that you make. And, and actually, I think so. It's, it's, it's interesting because, well, it's like all these kind of things that, well, people, they have talking that, well, it's more about habits that we yeah. have when we are mm -hmm. traveling than, than the food. And of course, well, if you're going to Mexico and you're going to try spicy food, of course, you can try it. If you eat yeah. a lot, that happens to everyone. We're going to have a bad stomach yeah. because it's the amount of things that you're eating. Yeah. So it's like the amount of spicy food, the amount of things yeah. that you're trying, that is like yeah. sometimes, well, of course, that would happen with everything. And yeah. I just want to go a little bit back in a way that well, when you were talking about different places and we have seen this extraordinary landscape that people, they can enjoy, but talking about culture and talking about the places, because, well, mm -hmm. you were saying that, well, visiting uh, uh, Aguasul waterfalls or, or, or these cascadas is very close to Palenque. And mm -hmm. what we can find, because you were talking about the Mayans, the history, and you compare it actually Palenque with Tikal. And mm. I think so places like this one is the one that people, they can find there. What was your experience being there between the pyramids or what the, this kind of um, the, the place, Palenque, and also surrounded by the jungle with all those nos noises that you can listen? Well, it's hard to put into words. Uh, Palenque is not only one of the best places in Chiapas, it's absolutely one of the best places to visit, period, in Mexico, but in the world. I mean, um, look at that, right? That's the palace of Palenque. And you can, uh, that was the ancient palace. And you can climb up those steps and go inside of it. There's little passageways, there's staircases. Um, that is the pyramid of, ah, some guy, I cannot pronounce his name. Pacal, Pacal. Oh. His tomb was at the bottom of it. They discovered his tomb and he had a jade burial mask. Uh, and that's now in the Anthropology Museum in Mexico City. Um, this one, I'm not sure you can climb anymore, but when I yeah, went there, I think there, so you can, can now. Yeah. 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 I did. I climbed it when I went there though. It's really steep. Right. Um, so they, they restrict climbing. Yes. Because it's bad for the, for the pyramids, but also because it's really easy to slip and fall down these things. Right. That's why. I, I do it. And I think so sometimes people, <laughs> they don't realize, but you know what, when I was a child, it was allowed, for example, to, to, to go to the top to the Chichen Itza, uh, yeah. castle. Yeah. And uh, the problem is not go to 
called upstairs because it's like you are seeing all the steps in front of you. The problem is go downstairs. When you see, because they are very high and they are very small, the steps. So they are like very uh, uh -huh. narrow. So it's like going down, it's just difficult. And it could be, yes, uh, the people, they can fall down. And as you were saying, it could be also slippery because it's like the, the, the stones. Yeah, but they are very old now. Absolutely. Uh, and you asked me how you feel there, right? And that's a good question because you feel when you go to um, um, Machu Picchu, or you go to like, uh, God, like the great, the, I'm sure I've never been there, but like imagine what it would be like to see the pyramids of Egypt, um, any of these great ancient cities, which Palenque undoubtedly is. And you mentioned Chichen Itza, which is incredible and I love it, but the difference between Palenque and Chichen Itza is uh, Palenque is overgrown with jungle, right? Like there's this single area that's been cleared, um, but then you hike into the jungle and go into deeper areas, and there's monkeys swinging from the trees and howling, uh, there's tropical birds, uh, you might see a big snake slithering by, it's quite wild. Uh, uh, the first time I went to Palenque, I went back two days later. <laughs> I, I visited all the ruins, and then I went to the waterfalls, the ones you know, Agua Azul, and the next day I thought, well, I'm going to go back. It's, it was cool, I want to see it again, right? You climb one of those pyramids, the ones you, you can see people on that one, climb up there and just sit there and look over the site and remember that it, it, this Palenque declined earlier than other Mayan sites. Uh, Chichen Itza was still a bustling capital when Palenque collapsed. Nobody knows exactly what happened to the Mayans, right? They think it's the water supply was affected. If they were warring with each other a lot, Palenque lost their war with um, Tonina, which is nearby. But Palenque declined 1,200 years ago. It was abandoned. So when the first, I mean, the local Mayan people knew about it, of course, and the first, uh, I think they were European explorers. It might have been Americans, actually, who started, like, really excavating it, I believe, in the 50s. Um, it was covered in jungle. It looks like, it looks like large hills, right, like with trees everywhere. It's quite, quite impressive. This central area with these pyramids is less than 2% of the city. Uh, it continues off into the jungle far beyond the borders of the national park um all these little structures and things it's it's quite an impressive site it's it's really really large and beautiful and amazing yeah well i think it's like a really uh, and of course well people they shouldn't miss these places as you were saying because also it's no. a mixture and it's like you are very close to the nature and also yes this is the view being there mm -hmm. the, the vibe everything is something that well it definitely you should put it in your list when you are traveling to mexico and chiapas should be one and also if people they want to know more about chiapas how can they learn more about that Ted? interesting you asked i wrote <laughs> <laughs> thank you i wrote a guidebook about chiapas um i updated it in 2018 and the prices are probably out of date for public transportation, but everything is still there. It's an itinerary. Um, it's a five-day itinerary. So you can see um, uh, San Cristobal and Palenque and a few other places around there, including the Canyon de Sumidero in five days. And then I have an appendix that explains exactly how to get to uh, Lagunas de Monte Bello, um, Comitan, uh, the, the beaches, which very few people go to the beach in Chiapas. When I went there, that would have been 2017. There was no Wi-Fi. Uh, the hotel I stayed at did not have a shower. I dipped a bucket into a, a big drum of water and poured the bucket over my head. There was about five hotels on the beach. And I ate dinner at the hotel every night. There were no restaurants there. Amazing. So my, uh, my guide is on Amazon. It's on my blog. My blog is called No I Bronca. Oh, I'm, I'm sure you'll introduce it for me too, but. I, yeah, uh, I will. I will. And I just found the guide. It's very, if you type in Chiapas. But actually, we are going to share with a, with the audience, you know, that, that while well, they know exactly where they can find, because I think for your blog, you have a lot of tips. And also, you have only one book or do you have another one? Do you have another one? I have one for, yes, I have one for Cancun and the Mayan Riviera. Ooh. And it's the same kind of idea to, to go to Can start in Cancun, uh, stay in the cheap part of Cancun, head out to the Valladolid, which is next to Chichen Itza, go down to Playa del Carmen, go to Tulum. Uh, the Cancun one I wrote because I was on a long trip. I traveled all the way down to Honduras. And then my wife got a vacation from her job. 
and said, I can come out and meet you. And I traveled all the way back up. I went through Palenque, actually, all the way back to Cancun. And she had five days. And I said, all right, let's go here, 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 and here. And afterwards, I found the company. It's called Unanchor. They're the publishers. And they uh, publish itineraries. I thought, wow, that little trip I did with my wife, then she was my girlfriend, would be perfect. That you can see these things without rushing. You know, plenty of time to sit on the beach. But I see some culture, too, and save money. So yes, there's two, uh, anyone who visits my blog will see their links to Amazon on the, on the page that you see on every, every site. And actually, yep. as you said, maybe the prices, they are like, we need to update that prices. But I think it's a good idea, you know, that people, they know what are the main places that they should visit when they are like traveling to these areas. And also it's like, as you were saying, not only Mexico, it's like all this part of the Riviera Maya, as well as like mm. some places that well, also, it, uh, it, well, not, well, I'm saying not Mexico, but well, Riviera Maya is Mexico, but well, all, all the, the different uh, locations and some tips that, well, you as a tourist is like, you shouldn't miss when you have the opportunity to be there. And also it's like all the complete audience is like, I, I, I will take a look also uh, just to see which places I miss when I have the opportunity to go there. And of course, yes, it's cool. strongly recommend to people to go to that area. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you very much. Yes. I have a team there. I, I'm someone who I, I'm not a, I'm not a, I didn't sent there on a sign for a week to take notes. I spent a lot of time there over the years and I have do have a lot of kind of insider tips and my email address is in the blog. And I, I actually, I got a, a coincidentally, I got an, an email from a woman today who bought my guide and thanked me for oh, it. Hey. And I, yeah, which is great. Sometimes people ask questions. Sometimes they just write. Uh, and I really appreciate that. And so, yes, that's part of the deal is, you can ask me. I think it's pretty clearly explained, but um, but uh, yeah, it's there. So thank you for mentioning it on air for me. Of course, of course. Um, two other really quick questions. Where can we find you social media wise? Because we have your blog, we have the links. <laughs> Are you on? Because I couldn't find not, you. On social media. Not really. <laughs> yeah, not really. I'm, I, uh, I have a blog. Uh, I am a writer. So I write a lot of behind the scenes stuff. I did a lot of translating work. I, uh, I, I, I do a lot of writing work and I, I wrote my blog just because I enjoy it. Um, I, since I moved to China, I haven't really updated it very much. Yeah. So yes, I have, I have Facebook. Uh, I check it. I check it. <laughs> I and, it. And actually it's like, as you said, as, yeah, I, I, I have noticed as well. That, yeah. I have uh, and, and something that well is like, as you were saying, your blog is no hay bronca that I think yes, so my, is going to tell us what is the meaning of no hay bronca in a couple yes. of minutes more because well she has her okay. section about some slang so she will let us know yes i will uh, no hay bronca. yeah 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 but i i actually um wanted to add too like if people want to get in touch with you um yeah. They just leave a comment on your blog because that's what I did, yes. and here you are with yeah. us today. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, no, I will, exactly. But it's, I will talk about noise in my blog. Okay. segment later. Definitely, I'm not. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But um, the last question I I'm have. I'm sorry. Let, just let me say, I do have Instagram. My wife doesn't. Oh, sorry. <laughs> my wife doesn't, but it's a, it's a no I bronca blog. Uh, but okay. yes, anyone who wants to contact me, I, I do check my blog regularly, even though I. I don't have the time to update it as much as I'd like. So yes, leave a comment. I will get it. And uh, that's the that's the best way to contact me. Yeah, sorry to interrupt you. But no, 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 no. I'm yeah. glad you did because I couldn't find you. But that doesn't mean you don't exist on Instagram. And one final question. What do you miss the most about Mexico? Name one thing if you can. Oh, I should say friends and family because I miss friends and family a lot. But I miss the food. Damn, I miss <laughs> food. <laughs> Yeah, just to be polite and to be nice, I'm going to say friends and family. However, I really need the food. Yeah, okay. Uh, of course, I've been. Of course. But I, I you know, we, we can Skype, we can Zoom. I can't Zoom a taco, you know? Yeah, like, that's really true. Uh, <laughs> but uh, there's, there's a Mexican restaurant. I'm in, I'm in uh, Guangzhou, China, and there are a couple Mexican restaurants here. We've been to several of them, and it's good. There's a decent Mexican restaurants here, but wow. they're expensive. It's 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 foreign food. It's expensive. There's yeah. nothing like taqueria, tacos al pastor, mm -hmm. una, una chelita, la cajuama. <laughs> oh my God! In Toluca, there was uh, adobada, 
right? Adobada tacos, there's chorizo tacos. Oh, there's green chorizo. Okay, chorizo. stop, I, stop. No, yeah, you're stop. Right. Stop. <laughs> Enrique, Enrique, you're in London. You're, you yeah. know what I'm talking <laughs> You know what I'm talking about. No, yeah. I miss, yeah. and seriously, I miss Mexican people a lot too. I, I was, my students were wonderful. Um, uh, the people in general, cheerful, um, hard working, nice people, good environment. And I really miss traveling. Um, just hop on a bus and go. Yeah. Never made plans. Two days before my summer vacation, I would, well, actually in the end, I started flying a lot. It's very cheap to fly in Mexico. But if, if I didn't buy a flight in a, a week in advance, I would just take a taxi to the bus station and just get on. <laughs> Wake up to the next morning. Yeah. So there's a lot to love about Mexico. There's a lot to love about Mexico, but the food. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So Ted, it has been a pleasure. It has been like very complete one. You provide us the information and also okay. for the audience that they will know more about what is Chiapas in Mexico, the different places they can visit. So thank you very much. And hopefully you could, you will come soon again just to talk about the other places that we didn't spoke and also to talk in a different way about the Riviera Maya and more about your experience also in Toluca, cycling, uh, the Nevado de Toluca, that is a volcano, etc. cetera. So well, it's, thank yeah. you very much, Ted, for being tonight with us. And well, enjoy your day there in China. Night. My night. night. <laughs> very your, much. your night. night. Yeah. Yeah. Night. 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 Yeah. It's my night. Okay, your night. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Enrique. Thank you, me. Thank you both. And I, yeah, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Cheers. Well, he is Ted Campbell. So thank you very much. And also, well, it's like I, we have already our next guest and we're going to change a little bit the topic and we're going to talk about music. So just that, uh, well, just to remind you that, well, it's like we're going to show you some of the events that they are oncoming. So, well, our next guest, he is Dukus and he's British Colombian producer. He's a sound engineer and recording as artist from South London and bringing the gap between melodic rap and singing. His Colombian roots have uh, enabled him to produce Spanish and English songs side by side. Uh, and actually he has a recent success of uh, taking Spanish featuring with DCUs and Sin Palabras, making him one of the hottest emerging Latin producer artists coming from the UK. So I would like to say hello to our friend Dukus. Hi, how you doing Dukus? Hey, how's it going? All good. How are you? Good, good, good. Relaxing. <laughs> Excellent. So, well, first of all, thank you very much for joining us tonight. And, well, um, I would like if you can uh, tell us about yourself as an artist and, 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 and also what role did music play in, in your life uh, when growing up? Uh, well, my dad was a piano teacher, so I played piano from the age of three. So that's basically what got me into music. But he was very, very strict with me. So I'd have to play the piano every day before school. He'd pick me up from school, so I wasn't allowed to hang around any of the other kids. And he'd make me play piano um, after school as well. So it was very strict. I wasn't allowed to listen to any salsa or anything like that. But my mom loved a lot of the Latin music, so I used to steal some of her music and listen to a bit of Celia Cruz and Hector Lavoe. And um, that's kind of how I got into the whole Latin thing. And then um, I started going back and forth to Colombia um, for like Christmases and stuff like that. And um, I really fell in love with the culture, the music. My family are from Medellin. So, you know, I spent a lot of time in Medellin and, you know, there's so much reggaeton, so much salsa in Cali, you know, when I was traveling. And I love dancing salsa and bachata in general. So, you know, I never made music in Spanish, but growing up and being in Colombia, the around the environment, the food, and just the overall culture, just listening to music on the buses when you just hop on a bus. Mm -hmm. I just thought I, I just need to incorporate it in my music somehow, you know? And then I'd say 2018 is when I first started incorporating Spanish, a bit more Spanish into my music. I didn't really speak that well, but the more I started going out with, um, um, going out to Medellin and speaking with my cousins and stuff like that, you know, yeah, I just, I just thought it's just a natural progression, you know. 
Interesting. So before we get into that, because that's definitely a topic we want to talk about, um, let's talk about just the music as far as like the genre. So like what genre is your music? And I know you talked a little bit about the Colombian roots, but how have they specifically influenced your sound? I would say, I think I, I, I probably make easily, you could say it's reggaeton music, but then there's a bit of Latin trap in there. And then some of the stuff is a bit Latin pop sounding. So I think it's like a it's a mixture of reggaeton and I'd say maybe UK Latino, if you want to call it that. Um, I think that's the new subgenre or the genre we're trying to establish over here, the UK Latino sound. So I'd say reggaeton UK Latino, I think. Okay. And um, the, the Colombian influence, yeah, I mean, it's, it's very big. Um, I, I listen to a lot of Latin music in general. And um, I'm constantly listening to like reggaeton, salsa, and bachata in general. So um, in Colombia, especially Medellin, there was so much. Um, sorry, Did my okay. camera. Okay, um, I I used to listen to a lot of reggaeton because my cousins would go to a lot of um, reggaeton places. And at first, I was like, this is too much, you know. Yeah. Um, but after a while, it was like I kind of started understanding it more. Um, I started going to a lot of the I Love Reggaeton parties, uh, Reggaeton Savage parties over here in London when it was in Coco. Um, and go to all the Latin places that you would go to. So, yeah, I'd say I'm quite heavily influenced by the Latin culture and, and Colombian culture in general, to be honest. And, Dukas, I have a question, obviously, about your roots, and then you've been there in Colombia and here in the UK. Your songs are in English and Spanish. Can you... Uh -huh how you decide which language you're going to use for your songs it was just go for the english because it's a bigger market or, or mix how how was it i mean i started using a bit of spanglish in the music because i just thought i just want people to kind of understand i want people to both people that listen that are, are english speaking to kind of get the English side, but then obviously the the, the market and I, I'm aiming for is the Latin territory market. So um, in a way, I, some of the feedback I got from the Latin territory curators and people who, who work in Spotify and Apple, they said, you know, we really like the music, but maybe it's got a bit too much English. Um, then the English people were like, well, there's a bit too much Spanish in there. So it was a bit of like, you know, well, I kind of want to make the music I feel I should make. Um, but then I think lately, all well, my new material has a lot of Spanish in it. Um, it's just something I've gravitated towards. Um, I just, I don't know. I, I, I'm kind of letting my Spanish has gotten better over the last year or so. So I'm kind of doing a lot more Spanish stuff and I'll play it to like my Spanish friends, um, people that help me songwrite a little bit. And then I'll kind of, they'll kind of help me say, nah, change this, make this better. You can say this better. Um, because I, I just want the stuff to do well, even in the Latin territory. I think that means more to me, more than just the English territory. So I, I kind of lean towards more the Spanish side, if I'm being honest. So and, and oh, that Spanish, way... The Spanish is, is cool. Yeah, and, no, and, I love Spanish. I love the sounds. And Terry, it's like just uh, talking about your music, and uh, I, I don't know if you can tell us uh, a little bit more like, uh, about what have been some of your biggest singles and what will you be releasing next? Um, well, I released a song called Talk in Spanish, which actually was my first song that had Spanish on it. Um, for me, it's quite a basic sound, like my Spanish isn't so great on it. Um, but that song got picked up by quite a few um, playlists on Spotify and ended up, ended up getting over a million streams. So that's kind of like been the most successful song that I've done. I didn't even do a video for it. It was just something that just happened organically. Someone heard it, was like, hey, this is great. I'm gonna put it in this playlist. Then um, someone called AJ Kajahedo, who he was looking after all the Spotify Latin playlists. And now he's working at Google for YouTube. He heard the track and was like, this is great. He sent it to all his people um, in Spotify. They put it in editorial playlists and then it got more traction and then so that's one of the biggest songs that I worked on um, as an artist. And obviously, as I'm a producer as well, um, I've done loads of stuff for like UK rap and, and, and trap for the trap scene over here. So there's loads of stuff that I've worked on that have, have been quite successful. I'm quite lucky in that sense to have, have been given those opportunities. 
but yeah, I say talking Spanish probably the most successful song that I've worked on. That has big that has gone on to do big things. And yeah, releases. I've got I don't know if you heard of Desta French. She's a female artist um who's who's doing quite well over uh, over here in the UK. Um she's Colombian Italian. So I've got a couple of songs with her that we've got um in the pipeline. Um, I've got an artist called Julie that I'm man managing at the moment as well. So I've got a few songs with her coming out. Um, Fluffy um, and Kiko as well. They're UK Latino artists. I've got a few songs with them coming out. And um, I would like to work with a few English UK artists. I've got a few Albanian artists that I'm working with as well. So there's a few things. I don't want to say too much and say, hey, I'm working with this person in case it doesn't happen. I I'm always touching wood and... I just want to make sure that the songs are actually going to get released, you know, rather than say, you know, it's, it's, it might happen. All the songs that all the people that I've mentioned, those are songs that are definitely happening. So, so it's all good to mention them. Yeah. You don't want to like jinx anything. I totally, no. I totally get that. Cause the second you say it's happening, it could, it could fall. Again. Yeah. It just shifts yeah. the energy in the universe. And for some reason it just, somehow something changes you know so <laughs> always especially in these times these very trying times so you mentioned um a little bit about this about the fact that you're not just a singer you wear as we like to say many hats like you're mm -hmm. a producer sound engineer i believe you said you're managing someone as well so could mm -hmm. you tell us what that entails um i know you said who you've worked with but maybe under those different roles and oh. um and and what like what is your day to day life like and and doing all these things like what occupies most of your time what do you just tell us about that a little bit please um well I work for a few, I work for a lot of record labels over here as a sound engineer so um, I'll quality control a lot of music that you hear on the radio um, whether it be drill trap rap R and B. Um, even some pop stuff I've done. Um, I've quality controlled a lot of stuff for Bacardi, um, Adidas. So, you know, I've done an Adidas campaign for Stormzy where I was in charge of the music. So I fixed all the music for, for, for his clothing line range that he had with Adidas. Um, I did a campaign which is still ongoing for Bacardi. So all the music that you hear on most of Bacardi's social media and adverts, I've basically produced that music. Um, oh, okay. So there's there's little things like that. Um, but on a day-to-day, -day, um, I, I fix a lot of music for a lot of the top rap artists because I started doing rap music from early in terms of like understanding it, how to mix it, how to fix the voices. It's just something I've done well over the years. Um, I worked with Craig David when he was first kind of doing his thing. and. So I worked on his second album. I wrote a song for him called Spanish. So, you know, it's just one of those things where I was, I've, I've always been a creative person in studios. I've never really had, I never went to university or anything like that. Like I said, my dad taught me from early. So I've always understood music, the theory of music. I, I hear a song and it's like, I can't help but analyze it, how it was structured, what they recorded it with. Oh, they probably recorded it with this microphone. Sounds like they're using, do the, you know what I mean? It's, so yeah. it's like my brain with music works a little bit different. So I've always been put in a space and I know how to add to something to make it better, whether it be music, fashion, managing or creative roles within, you know, a record label or a radio station or for an artist. So, so yeah, I mean, that, that's basically my day to day. Um, just basically working in music. That's my full time. I have no other jobs. That's really not only just ambitious, but very impressive. Very, very Thank impressive. Thank you. Of course. <laughs> oh, you're on mute. <laughs> Roger's on um, mute, not you. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, okay. He has a question. Me. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, just uh, listening all your day day by day life is it, it, everything you've done and and obviously it comes from early but you how it feels with, because obviously you've been that way living that way how you reach the top of uk charts you being picked up by spotify and then it, how is how it feels how which is which is meant the most to you and why um i think 
when you're involved in good projects, obviously it's a good feeling. It means um, people value your work and just enough people have heard something. And maybe someone would have heard your music in a different place or, you know, like let's say for, um, let's say I worked on Giggs' album. He's got an album called Landlord, which I think went to number two or number five in the UK charts. So he showed me a message that um, Drake sent to him and Drake was like, damn, I really love this album. This is make, this is motivating me to make music. So to know that I played a part in that is obviously a good feeling. So that, that motivates you. Um, the last album I worked on was Fredo's album and that went to number two in the charts. Um, so when, when those little things happen, it just, it, it's, it's a good feeling, but obviously I want to be able to make more of an impact because I'm always helping people. So it's like you're working in a film. So the people that win the Oscar might be the director or it might be the actors. So I'm kind of more like behind the scenes. So it feels good. Um, but at the same time, I'd like to make enough of an impact to open more doors for people or maybe help my family. And, you know, do you know what I mean? I think that's, that's, that's kind of like the good thing of, 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 of getting in these positions is being able to help other people. And I think that's kind of what I want to be able to do more, get in those positions so I can help more people. So, um, so yeah, it's good, but obviously there's more to achieve. I'm always thinking about what's next. And, and just talking about next that you were saying, and, and actually it's like, well, you were telling us about the different uh, ideas that you have to, well, to work with any other artists and, and everything, mm -hmm. but it's more like, what do you think about that? I would like to say, what, is your, your, what are you working currently? And also is, uh, now that the lockdown is almost lived, if there is any oncoming performances that maybe you are going to start doing? Yeah, I mean, I, I plan to go to, my plan is to go to America and do some stuff over there. I've been invited to do some festivals. I think one in Croatia, a reggaeton festival. So, I mean, once, once these things open up again, um, I definitely want to be able to do a bit more festivals. I know um, La Clave Festival is probably happening again in August. So there's a possibility of performing there. Um, and there, there was meant to be a, f a few big shows that was, that's, that's, that was meant to happen in 2020 that didn't happen. So if they happen again, I don't want to jinx anything. So yeah. um, if those things do happen, then yeah, more than likely you'll see me on a stage supporting a big reggaeton artist or a few artists in the, in the near future. I think that's, that's the main aim. And then possibly maybe even some features with some of these big artists. I think I think that's the next aim, you know. Yes. Well, of course you have to let us know when that will happen. You know that as well we can invite the audience. Yeah, you know that as well. It's like yeah, it's just to tell them where are you going to have any performance or where you are going to appear. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Oh, so yeah, I mean, like most of the stuff you can check on Google. So if you type in my name, Dukus, D-U-K-U-S. Yeah. You can, you can, you'll be basically be updated with most of the, the stuff that I'm, I've got online. I, I mainly use Instagram and Spotify. I, mean, yeah. I, I use Twitter a little bit, but, but I'll definitely post all the details once I, I get the stuff and let you guys know as well. I'll definitely let you. Yeah. Cause then we can post it as well. And by the way, cool. as an American, I, you have my stamp of approval, like come play for <laughs> us in the States. <laughs> uh, that, that'd be, I badly want to go to Miami and LA and, and just work with some of the talent over there. Um, I think that's that's been one of my dreams for a while. And I was meant to go Miami in 2020, and then it just it just didn't happen because obviously the pandemic. So yeah. I was a bit bummed out because I was meant to uh, meet up with Tiny, who's Bad Bunny's producer, um, <gasps> meet up meet up with some of these people, and then it was like, no, nope, Corona. Do you know what I mean? Oh, so I so I mean, it just it's just the way it is. It's happened to everybody. So you know, yeah. it's just one of those things that. Um, yeah, it just happens, isn't it? Yeah, I I have a very interesting question. I think it, sure. we haven't asked this before and we've had many musicians and singers on the show. Uh, if you could change one thing about the music industry, what would it be? Aside from COVID, oh, that's not really about the music industry. <laughs> I, think, I think it would be kind of more help and education to like the up and coming artists. Um, so that they've got, the more up and coming artists have more of a chance to make it because at the moment the industry to be honest with you is a bit of a boys club it's, it just feels like a, a private members club sometimes so um, 
obviously some people are more fortunate than others, but it is like, I would like to see more people given more opportunities and fair chances so that their music is heard rather than, you know, this round table of, of people that say, you know, we should let these be the next ones and they get all the chances. You know what I mean? So I, I think I'd like to see more people get in positions of power so that they can give more people opportunities to have more chances to hear their music. Um, and that, you know, like I said, I really want to champion the UK Latino sound. So if I get to a certain position, it will be to help all that next generation of UK Latinos kind of take the step up so that they can be heard on like FM radios they can get put more in like playlists with more traction so that they can start generating some money from their music because right now there's just not enough in that sector for the UK Latino whereas if you say you started putting on a mask and you wanted to do drill music even if you're semi okay just because the platforms are there they can literally just go to the top and, and blow up and, and get loads of following on their Instagram because the way things are set up at the moment with that type of music. So, so it'd be more like getting into like, you know, for positions of power so that more people can have more, more opportunities. I think. Yeah. I really like that. And we'll obviously help. Hopefully I get, I hope that you get to do that. And when you do let us know because we would love to promote those artists as well on the show sure you know i'm gonna keep you updated with all the new artists that i come across Perfect. please do <laughs> yes and and before the last the last question where we is where we can find you i would like to also uh, add a little bit on what you were saying and it, that's a very important and it's a very fair what you say here in the latin american show we have a lot of Latin American artists, they need a little bit, that little bit, that push, that, that push. push. So we're trying to be a platform. And obviously, uh, with the help of you, pe people like you, when then you have some connections or some bridges to do it, please let us know, because this platform is for pushing a lot of artists. And the talent we, we have in here in the Latin American show has been amazing. Thank okay, you very much. No, great. Before, Thank before you, so you go, much. tell us, where can our viewers find you and you and your music? Obviously, just say it cool. again, please. Yeah, um, you can find me on Instagram if you type in Dukus, um, D-U-K-U-S. Um, if you type um, Dukus in Google, all my socials should come up. Um, sometimes I change the S for a five, um, just stylistically, but you should find me D-U-K-U-5 or D-U-K-U-S on Google. Um, my music should come up. Um, I'll come up on Spotify. Uh, and then, yeah, you can just check out my music there. I've got links to my website there where you can check out a lot of my works. And, um, yeah, you can type me on, on, on YouTube as well, Dukos, and some of my songs should come up. Um, I've got some stuff with Warner at the moment as well, so they've helped me release some music. Um, so you should see some releases under the Warner record label. Um, in the, that the last record I put out called Bambi, they released it, and I have got some more stuff in the future coming out on Warner. Um, but the stuff I've shown you, like the Nobody video, Salvaje, Un Problema, those are songs that I did independently myself. So, so yeah. Actually, well, yes, uh, it's very, it's very, it's very easy for people that well, if you, as you were saying, Google it, it's going to appear. Your, your playlist to the right side. So you just uh -huh. need to type Dukus and it appears, of course, your Twitter and your different Instagram and different social networks. So people, uh -huh. they can follow you very, very easy. Hmm. Thank you so much, guys, for having me. I really appreciate it. Of course. Thank you so much. Thanks, Whitney. Thank you very much. <laughs> and thank you for the support of the Latin American artists. And as I say, and you have uh, the open doors here in Latin American show when thank you so much you want to come i back. really appreciate it thank you roger thank you enrique thank you whitney um i, I really appreciate it That's true. thank you very much Dukus. and well now i think it's time to listen to some music from Dukus. so well it's like we're gonna listen nobody so well thank you very much and it's like you. Uh, over you roger yeah.
in the room like nobody I know 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 Is she a good one? 10 out of 10 very good one Yeah I'm trying to hit I want a shoot gun Entramos gratis, yeah. Ella se activa, quiere fumar la califa. Y solo con la mirada, te hace mucho y no te olvidarás. Nobody, she does it like nobody. Nobody, step in the room. Now it happened to him. It happened to him. <laughs> mm-hmm. It happened to all of us. Just what too bad he, uh, he wasn't on mute during part of my first segment. Okay, yep, go by. <laughs> <laughs> but finally, we give some beautiful music to Mr. Enrique. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Roger. And well, this is a, it's Duku, so well, it's very easy to find it. You just need to Google it, Dukus, or if not, we already shared the different social networks that you can find him here. Oh, when you're done, please finish first. <laughs> okay, so well, we already shared the Instagram and the YouTube where you can find more music from Dukus that, believe me, is extraordinary. And also, as he said, and also as we have said many times here in the Latin America show, Let's support all these new artists and the artists that they are doing different things. As he was saying, well, he's not only an art uh, singer, he's also a producer. So I think so we just need to be uh, more uh, cooperative and also support each other. So is this is a good opportunity to improve and also to, well, to support all these new artists. And well, yeah. sorry, Whitney, what do you want now to you say? Can, well, now I... you're saying that, now you're saying that, Enrique, uh, <laughs> about supporting. Here in London, we have uh, several friends, uh, which they promote in the, the sounds, the Latino sounds and the mix. So they're welcome to support all the new artists as well. No? So we invite them as well. You can see Latin American show. Okay. And yes. And just one other thing. By the and another thing is that it, ah, <laughs> okay. no, no, I'm 
I no. cheat. It's being interrupted. Oh, no, sorry. Go with me. No, it's fine. Um, what I was going to say is after this episode, I am going to, so within the next hour, you will see all of Dukas's music that is on Spotify on our playlist. So follow the Latin America show on Spotify. There is only one. And in case, in just if you want to double check, it has the logo too in our, yes, just one. Thank you. Yeah, I'm not on mute, so they actually know what I'm saying. <laughs> um, so I will update that within the hour, and then you can add, uh, listen to his music. Are you done? Did you go? I was just supporting you. <laughs> with me. It was more like all the things that you were saying. I was just like trying to make it a little bit more graphic, what you were talking about. OK, thank you. Ah, since you're trying to go to with me section, I'm gonna put in mute. Man, okay, yeah. Not just so, gonna... Yeah, no, 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 you don't know. Okay, so <laughs> I am going to, yep, microphones are already in mute. Okay, yeah, tell Kevin to be quiet as well. Um, Enrique's dog, in case you haven't missed some of the episodes. Okay, so I know that I'm going to get lots of criticism from at least one of my colleagues tonight on this list, but I would like to say that Ted Campbell's blog, it's called Noi Bronca. So um, we're gonna, and in that blog, he actually has a page about slang. So tonight's slang is not just dedicated to our one of our guests, but it came from his blog. So if it's incorrect, Enrique, Take it up with Ted. Now, <laughs> so the first word is bronca. So, okay, um, Ted's blog, no hay bronca. We're gonna get to that in a minute. So bronca means a lot of things. Um, in regular, <laughs> like regular non-slang Spanish, in a lot of countries it can mean like a fight, a scolding, a telling off, pretty much every episode that we have on the show. Um, we have many broncas. Um, a mess, a row, a racket. But in Mexico, it's also known as problems. So no hay bronca is, means that it is not a problem. It's like saying no pasa nada, no hay bronca. So, that, so that's what it means. I'm, I'm still watching you too. You think I can't multitask, but I'm quite good at it. All right. So that's the first word slash two words expression. So that's the name of his blog, no hay bronca, no problem. Now, ahorita, this isn't specific to Mexico at all, but um, it is something that is said. So ahora means now, right? And ahorita, so we, we mentioned earlier in this episode, the itor ita, this is what we call diminutive, and it's used to show something that's like small. So, Ahorita like literally means like right now. Um, and in Mexico, they might say ahorita and you might think right now, but it can also and typically can be used to say soon or eventually. Yes. Okay, good. We are in agreement. I'm checking Enrique's face because I just, I know the judgment is going to like ooze out if I don't get any of this right. Okay, next, next three. Because I always just plan like six words because I'd rather explain them. Quality over quantity. Okay, luego, luego. So luego means later. And you've seen it before, like hasta luego. Um, you can use it as a connecting word um, when you're thinking is like a thinking word. Um, I don't really, but I've heard it that way. Luego, luego. So unlike ahorita, this actually does mean right now. <laughs> so that's the word I'm going to start using with Enrique and Roger when I say put your microphones in mute. <laughs> luego, luego. And then um, un camión. So camión is, okay. So it can mean in other parts of Latin America, a truck, but it actually is referred to as a bus. So the official word for bus is autobús. Um, we have seen other words from other countries as bus, like Wawa is bus in Cuba, like La, Ru Ra La República Dominicana in Puerto Rico. We've seen colectivos um, in various countries, um, oh, Argentina being one of them. And, oh gosh, I don't know if Enrique is taking notes, like, because he's learning something or he's taking notes to tell me how wrong I am. But camión is, an, is a word to say autobús, a bus, un camión. And then the last one is codo. So codo means like your elbow, but 
Um, but in Mexico, <laughs> it's slang for stingy. <laughs> so stingy is someone who's like a cheap person. Una persona tacaña, okay? Tacaño. <laughs> Roger, you are so funny. Oh my goodness. I'm not saying a thing. I'm not agreeing or disagreeing because I would like to stay on the Latin America show. So I'm going to be quiet for once. Um, so if someone says no seas colo, it's like, don't be cheap. All right. Um, and there are more expressions that use codo, like hablar co por los codos, which means like someone who talks too much. I'm not making a comment about that at all either. I'm gonna be very careful. Um, romperse los colos, which is someone who like works too hard. So there's a lot of expressions with it and we'll get into more of those next time. But that is the end and uh, that's it for the segment for tonight. And la micro, que es eso, explícamelo. Can you can you Royer, talk the words? Can you explain what is la micro? I don't know this one. <laughs> Wait, okay, I'm looking it up. I don't trust it, the, these dictionaries. No, it's it's part of the slang. When you were talking about el camión, like, ah, like okay. minibus. Yes, it's like a minibus. Yep, but I just looked that I don't up. know why it's interesting because micro is like a it's a masculine, yeah, and and normally it should be el micro. No, because it's to be That's like, true, a, like micro, a micro prestamo. Yeah, but to the minibus, they call them la micro. Ah, it's like la mano. Like la guagua and everything. They call it la micro. It's wrong. I think it's wrong because it's el microbus. That could be. But they no, call it like a the part of them. If, if Enrique <laughs> says it's wrong, it has to be wrong. No, 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 it, it's wrong because it's a microbus. <laughs> no, it's a microbus. It's a microbus because it's masculine, but people, they call it la micro. So it's like, what? No idea why, but it's and, like, and that's the, the way that And the micro, but and the micro doesn't micro. have much uh, because it's a big bus. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's like, a big bus, yeah. Or, or, like if it's, I don't know if it's, I don't know if they say colectiva though. I know if they say colectivos. So if it was like a version of Depends that. Where, then... But yeah, yeah, it could be colectivo. Yeah. yeah. But it's, it's maybe in different cities in Mexico, they call it el colectivo. Yeah, could be. Should but, have said, but, but, yeah. Oh, Actually, I think so it should be like a proper way to call it sometimes. Yeah. But it's more like a slang, as you were saying. And the other one, it's interesting because ahorita, as you were saying, it's mm -hmm. like, it depends. Sometimes we use it ahorita. Auritita, ahorita mismo. So well, it's yeah, like different times. This, I think our audience different yeah. times that that could be like ahorita, like eventually, yeah. Auritita <laughs> is <laughs> like <laughs> as soon as possible. Yes. And ahorita mismo means like hey, right mismo, now. But okay, definitely because ahorita mismo <laughs> means like right now. So definitely, if you add mismo at the end, I totally agree. But ahorita, I definitely has lots of connotations. Ah, oh, yes, of course. A lot of them uh, don't is, mean yeah. in this moment right now. <laughs> yeah, just be careful because, well, and, it's like you are seeing right now. However, it's not right now when they right. are telling you, ahorita, ah, yeah, well, ahorita. It's like you saying you're going to put the microphone on mute right mm. now, and then it takes you like two minutes. So it eventually happens. It just might, might not be when I ask you to. Hold on, let me do something. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Whitney, <laughs> Whitney, you need to. <laughs> Sorry, she was on mute. I don't know why she was on mute. I think so, Whitney. By mistake, you press the mute button. No, you don't. You hey. don't make mistakes. And if you do, you wouldn't. Teacher, teacher. Si, estudiante favorito. If you say ahorititititita, it's because someone is already uh, angry because it's not there. <laughs> I will use that in next week's segment with one of you. You may guess who. <laughs> yeah. This is like the best. Yeah, well, anyway, um, <laughs> anyway, the other thing is that, well, it's like as, as Justin, she's saying, well, something that happened is El Pesero in Mexico. And basically, I think in Mexico City, El Pesero. And El Pesero, it could be uh, the microbus also. Uh, that we were talking about. But actually, the reason why they call it pesero is not because it's pesera. What, what's the meaning of pesera in, in, in English, uh, Whitney? Well, I think one of the ways... 
It could I be mean, like a pish The only tank. other way I heard it is use like, like in slang as like a butcher. Well, no, it could be a pish tank. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. oh, there's no way I knew that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one, <laughs> una, una pecera, one pecera, the, the, the translation should be like a fish tank. Yeah. Right. However, in Mexico, we call it fish tank. Uh, also, if you want to say fish tank, to the to this microbus or some, um, it could be like combis that used to be like these small yeah. cars that they were like moving people. But actually, the reason why or the rationale behind that is because they you have to pay one peso for the journey. I, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the reason why is that they were at, what they, they they said pesera because it cost one peso. However, of course, with the time that 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 rate it was not uh, not not any longer. But well, they just received the name of la pesera. But it's yeah, it's el cheap. pesero. It's like be. saying a dollar yeah. store, but nothing in there costs a dollar anymore. Yeah, correct. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's so well, it's like a thing. yeah, some of the things thank you, Jaja, for, for letting us know <laughs> that. And and also we are saying uh, oh okay, well uh, Annalise she's saying something interesting because also she's comparing with South Africa. And she's saying that in South Africa, uh, she's saying we also have now, just now. <laughs> And now, now, all different states of urgency. So while it's basically, it's almost the same that we have, it depends the different time scales. So while the now is not always now. Oh, it's like in the States, you know, it's a typical scenario. Like, you know, woman's in the kitchen, guys on the sofa watching football. Will you wash the dishes? Yeah, 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 I'll get to it now. It's like, when now? <laughs> you see, so it's exactly the same. So you use well, the yeah, language in that around. way. Times have changed, but it's one of those scenarios. <laughs> oh, it's the same. It's ahorita. 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 Ahorita mismo. Yeah, it's when you are completely angry about that. But anyway, thank you very much. I think it's very illustrative. And while we know more slang about Mexico and Latin America, and yes, of course, el camión. Yeah, that's interesting. El camión. It's interesting that we call it. And actually, of course, you cannot say camionero to a bus driver, even it could be because camionero, it should be like a truck driver. Mm -hmm. And the other one, it could be a bus driver. So be careful, the dog, and also some of them, they could get offended if you, if you use that one. But of course, if you are like not native Spanish speaker, they will understand, so don't worry about it too much. Yeah, absolutely. Wonderful anecdote. <laughs> I'm learning something every show. <laughs> you see, you see, it's good that you're attending the Latin America show as all the rest of the audience. <laughs> anyway, I think so. We have like something with you, Roger, about some events. Yeah, well, just uh, reminding again, please, Enrique, we have the tequila tasting and network session this May 27. Thanks to our friends of the Mexican Chamber of Mexican Chamber of Commerce. If you want to know more, just visit the website of the Mexican Chamber of Commerce, and then you will see the events there. And then if you give a click, you will see all the instructions so you can subscribe just to have this amazing tequila tasting. I want Thank you. To already, uh, I already shared with the with the audience, and I think you have another slide for different events uh, yeah, from our we friend have another. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Yeah, just put it in the correct place. Yes, these uh, the events this week by Latin Indian events is it's going to be very some a very special thing because there's going to be a project talk on the Children Change Colombia charity as I seen you as you seen it on Latin America show before. You're gonna get a detailed insight into their projects and work. So I will post these after the uh, show, so you can visit uh, the the link there, or just visit straight away www.childrenchangecolombia.org. That's it. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you very much, my dear Roger. And well, I think we're starting to go. So. Thank you very much, Roger Alarcón. Well, it's been a pleasure. 
to be with you guys and also to hear uh, an amazing artist, which is uh, he want to help the other artists. And as I said before, we have so many talents here in the Latin American show. And if you know someone or if you're an artist, please contact us at the Latin American show so we can show you your your uh, your songs or any any artist can can uh, contact us. Thank you, Roger. And, uh, and of course, well, as Roger said, well, if you know someone who is interested to come to the show, let us know, send us a message here to the Latin American show Facebook page. And on the other side, we have in Power Bridge, Whitney Lucereno. Um, thank you again for tonight. It was really fun um, watching back that interview with Ted um, and talking with Dukas. Um, it was really a pleasure. And I have not had this yet, but I look forward to this after the show. And hopefully you will have poured a glass for yourself as well, as you still have three hours and four minutes uh, to enjoy Nash. Nope, two hours and three minutes. I can't do math. Very good. It's not the wine, just a tired brain. Um, to enjoy National Wine Day before it's been night. Don't judge, Enrique. <laughs> hey, Whitney. Whitney. I'm and judging I, myself. I, so I, it's. And, <laughs> yeah. And for, for the audience, I found you for this. I found you this. Yay. This. Thank you. Yep. Everyone that we've had on the show that that has their music on Spotify is on there. Um, and oh, one last thing, actually, I went and saw El, um, Ellie y la Evolución Sunday night at Ronnie Scott's. So good. So next time that she and her band are playing, it, uh, go. It was the, one of the best concerts I have been to. It's team by music. It's really lively. It's really fun. I 100% recommend. So I don't know when the next concert is, but I'm sure it'll be sometime this summer. So check out the Ronnie Scott space. And, and once we know, I will broadcast it on here for sure. It was 100% worth it. So, yeah. That's very and, thank you yeah, very much. Please Whitney. tell us, Whitney, when you're going back again, to, I want to go. Okay. Yeah. And Ellie came and, and, and met us later. So I met some of the band. They're really, it's a really Look great. At this. Oh Look my God. This. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this. Yeah, it was so much fun. Sunday night, which was a little tough, but it was 100% worth it. And they figured out how to socially distance and put the little um, transparent like screens up. So it was it was well done. Perfect. And thank you, Lily Martinez, uh, also for being here. And I'm nice with Whitney. She's saying, Enrique, be nice with Whitney. Yes, I'm nice with Whitney. Nice with her. Like, I'm just like, yeah. Actually, she's the one that, if you pay attention to the program, she's always <laughs> mocking me, and she's just being a mean teacher with me. Yeah, but. little deserved. <laughs> bad, bad, bad student. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Whitney. Thank you very much, Roger, and thank you very much, everyone, for watching this episode. And well, remember to give us a like, and remember to share the videos. And remember that the Latin America show is every Tuesday, 8 p.m. London time. My name is Enrique Gelista, and we'll see you next Tuesday. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.